Hey, this is JR, the Texpat OTG. Today, Ray is off at the beach. I didn't feel like going to the beach. My skin's a little too white for that. I like uh, a little shade. And out there at Malloy Beach, there's not any shade at all. So I decided to stay home. I'll miss all the guys, the family, and everybody, but at least I can get some shooting done. Today we're going to discuss something that I very seldom get into on uh, my channel, and that's relationships. Today we're going to talk about relationships in the USA. Uh, what makes them good, what makes them bad, what the psychologists say, and then I'm going to sum it up with the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth about what relationships will work and which ones won't, and I'm going to tell you why. So, be sure and stay tuned to the end of the video to catch my opinion on this whole matter. I think I'm going to go outside, sit under a tree, and enjoy the breeze. We can talk out there. Well, today, we're going to go over some of the things that the psychologists have talked about, identified as some of the difficulties that people have in their relationships. You know, in the U.S., relationships typically don't last too long. The average, whether you're married or single, either one is only about 2.9 years. Uh, that doesn't seem like a very lasting relationship. To fill up your life, you're going to either have to have a lot of them or you're going to live alone. We're going to talk about the causes that the psychologists say cause these difficulties in relationships. I'm not sure they're right. They're psychologists, though. They went to school for it. I'm not sure my experience makes up for that. It does seem that they did get a few of them right. So we'll go over those things, and uh, I'll give you their thoughts, and I'll give you my opinion. The big cause, though, will be at the end of the program, and I want to see how many men have ever been able to solve this problem. I'm not sure there will be very many. Hopefully you'll leave something in the comments for me. I'd like to know what you think about it. The first thing that the um, psychologists mention is trust. Well, trust is a hard thing um, to have when you are first starting out a relationship. Uh, bottom line, I don't think that women trust men from the very beginning. Not unless you found one that's a 18-year-old virgin and has never been out on a date. Nearly any girl or woman that's ever been out with a guy before probably doesn't trust men at all, especially in the beginning. So what are you going to do about that? Well, that's a tough one. If the woman presumes that you're guilty until proven innocent, uh, you're going to have a tough time ahead of you. But honestly, uh, I found the same thing. I honestly don't think that women uh, trust you. If they get into a relationship, uh, they come in with suspicion. And I don't think men are the same. The men don't care that much. They'd rather watch the Sunday football game. The first time you come home late and you were over at the RC car store and she was out with her girlfriends or she was home watching TV, You'll notice those arms cross tightly across her chest. She's definitely um, lost trust in what you were doing. And you were just at the RC car store playing with the toys. Well, that isn't good enough. That goes in the don't trust side of the equation. How do you get around that? Well, you don't. Those things stay on there forever. Women have long memories. They're kind of like the elephant of human beings. They. Um, remember everything, they remember every incident, and uh, they never forget. Trust isn't something you earn, it's something you either have it or you don't, and more than likely you won't have it, especially the guys. Well, can you trust your girl? Uh, that remains to be seen too. Well, women a lot of times aren't trustworthy either. Well, how will you know, and bottom line, will you care? Does it make a big difference to you? Uh, it's one of those difficult things that um, you either have it or you don't, and it'll either ruin a relationship or not. But typically, I don't think it'll ruin a relationship. 
not without some of these other key factors involved. Poor communication is another thing. That's a tough one. A lot of times, people just won't say what's on their mind. And if they don't, they hold it in and it affects the relationship because the truth's not out in front of everybody. You have to have truth in a relationship and to do that, you have to communicate. But men and women communicate differently. If you ever listen to a group of men talking and then you listen to a, a group of women talking, you'll understand exactly what I mean. You certainly don't have to go to college and get your psychology degree to see the difference. Just listening will reinforce the point that there can be poor communications in a relationship and how it happens. And a lot of it's just human nature. Men are different than women, even though nowadays uh, they don't seem to think so. You just put on a dress and say, oh, I'm a woman now, and you're gonna be just like a woman. Well, that's not gonna happen. Human nature's different, physiology's different, it's all different. The lefties and libs can say, men can have babies and men can menstruate and all this kind of stuff. Now, that doesn't make it true. I think I'm old enough to know that. So remember, the average relationship, 2.9 years, it's not very long. And learning to communicate can definitely lengthen that time span. Another serious point is that people can have different priorities. You may want to learn a new trade, go out and get your master's electrician license, or maybe uh, you want to spend more time fishing, so you start a boat store, boat and fishing tackle. Well, all these things are, are good priorities, but they certainly might differ from what your mate is uh, intending to do. They may want a higher education, maybe uh, become a teacher. They might want to do social work. <laughs> they might just want to sit around in front of the TV and play with the cat. That's a possibility too. So different priorities in everyone, the men and the women, can hurt a relationship. You have to have something in common and some priorities that are the same, or you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle on this issue all the time. It's not gonna go well. It's always good to find something that you can do together that you both enjoy. It doesn't matter what it is, it can be simple. It can be something as simple as bowling. It can be something as, as uh, easy as learning golf together. It's good if something brings you together, gives you the same goal, and also makes sure uh, that your outcomes are similar. If you're so much better at something than someone, that's probably not a good thing to try to set as your common priorities. You need to find something that you're both pretty good at. You don't want to be out golfing and, and you do uh, two over par and she does 175 and only does nine holes. You need to find similar priorities in some areas, not necessarily in all areas, because no one is gonna always wanna do what the other person wants to do. So I think the psychologists were right on this. Well, the next one on the list is financial problems. And boy, this one can be a bag of worms too. It's not easy to, um, to solve this problem. More money doesn't necessarily do it. Less money definitely won't do it. You have to consider what the other person's interest is and don't, don't be so mad and so angry when they do something that you don't think is the right thing to do. And you know, the day that your husband or boyfriend comes home with a 1953 Chevy pickup truck that doesn't run, parks it in the driveway and says, it only cost me $3,000, well, there's gonna be a little problem there and part of it is jealousy. They're jealous because you got something that you wanted and they didn't get something that they wanted. There's a lot of reasons for them to be angry or at least uh, pretty annoyed with what you did. Running up credit cards, that's another thing. Debt is really something that eats on everybody. And if it eats on both of you, it's definitely going to affect the relationship. It's really important to not run up credit card debt and not be in debt and set financial goals for yourself and for you as a couple. That's a good thing, but it's a really bad thing 
to do things in secret without talking to the other person about it. It's a bad thing to run up credit cards. It's a bad thing not to discuss big purchases. A lot of people do these things and they do them on their own and they think they're doing the right thing. But I assure you they're not. They say money is the root of all evil. Well, sometimes it is. That's a, a very true statement. And in a relationship, if one person abuses the financial uh, situation that you're in and the other person doesn't, then they're going to think you're evil. They're definitely not going to appreciate what you do and it's going to cause tensions. So let's give the psychologist another point. I think they pretty much got that right. It can be a problem, but it's not the real problem. I'm saving that for later. Another thing that they talk about is taking the relationship for granted. I think everybody does that. It's kind of a, it's kind of human nature. You just expect the other person to go along with what you do and you don't really feel like it's necessary for you to um, follow along with their ideas and what they want to do. Expecting somebody to do something all the time, expecting them to always be the one that washes the dishes, always be the one that goes and closes the garage door at the end of the evening, always the one that takes care of the lawn or takes care of the bills, does the bills. As long as you keep expecting that from someone, you're taking them for granted. It's not a good thing. The psychologists say that taking people for granted is a very harmful thing in a relationship. If you don't have the appreciation, you don't have a, the fulfillment that that appreciation gives the person. So bottom line, you gotta be careful and you have to appreciate what the other person does for you and for the relationship and for the goals that you set for your family. This is another tough one, is intimacy. Now, there's an old joke that uh, when something like this, if you put a silver dollar in a jar every time that you have sex, and you do that for five years. After five years, you take one out every time you have sex. The jar will never be empty. I didn't think it was that funny, but it's kind of true. You think about it. You have to do things to keep things interesting. If you don't, things are gonna get dull and people's eyes are gonna start looking around. They're gonna be looking for attention and they're gonna be looking for the intimacy. Maybe not particularly the sex, but they miss the attention. This is a big problem. Women especially are a little needy. I hate to say that because that's gonna get me a jillion comments uh, uh, calling for my head on the platter, but they're a little needy about attention. and. You need to, to make sure that you give them the attention that they need. And it doesn't have to be a lot. Sometimes it's just telling them how nice they look when they're headed out to work. That little phrase may do a lot for your relationship. But when it comes to sex, hey man, it's free and it's fun. I take advantage of it every time I get a chance. I think it's a great thing. So. Um, you definitely need to work on that and work on your skills, work on the communication, work on the priorities, and the other things that uh, we mentioned earlier. They can all be uh, aided by a happy sex life and a lot of intimacy, well, basically a lot of fun. Everybody wants something that they don't have. That's a problem. And you know, the guys are gonna look around, they're definitely gonna do that. If you go to the mall, watch your guy, he's gonna be glancing out at a few butts and some legs and a pretty face. So uh, you're gonna have to just learn to expect it. Not all guys do it, but a lot of them do. And you may have one of those. And guys, your girl's the same. She wants to hear that she's beautiful. They, you know, in modern times, they say all this stuff, you know, is old fashioned and not, not really the right thing that we're just talking trash. But let me tell you something, it's true. Women appreciate it and men appreciate the attention. You know, the days that you go over and give your husband or boyfriend a, a big kiss and a hug and everything and maybe a little squeeze somewhere intimate and he's off to work, He's gonna have a great day and he's gonna be thinking about you all day. Those kind of things 
They're not uh, necessarily natural. They don't come natural, but there's something you can develop and you can work on it and you can improve your skills. So keep that in mind and try not to make uh, intimacy and sex part of the uh, downside of the equation. Let's make it part of the upside. Maybe we can beat that 2.9 years. When it comes to sex, men are real visual. They look, they like to look. They like to see you in sexy stuff. They like to see your legs in high heels when they're walking. There's a lot of reasons for this and it's because that's the way men work. Women don't work the same. You have to keep that in mind. Women like uh, the intimacy, they like, they like the attention, uh, they like the cuddling. Uh, there's a lot they like. That's not to say that's always the way it is. Sometimes women can be real aggressive. They can be aggressive and they can be uh, demanding for sex. So you have to take that into account too. Things can work in more than one way. You know, you have to, you have to go both ways on this. You have to learn that, that women can be aggressive and, and very sexual. They can also need the tenderness. Men are a little different. They don't need as much tenderness, but they do need a lot of visual stimulation. That's a fact. The only time you ever see women uh, go to something like a strip club is when they're gonna go for some girl's birthday, they're gonna watch the Chippendale style dancers and stuff, and it's pretty much for them a joke. It's a lot of fun. When guys go to the strip club, it's not a joke. Uh, they go to look, and they go to look for sexual things. They appreciate their lap dance. They don't consider it a joke, but women, on the other hand, really do. And they'll all go home, laugh, and the next day they'll be calling each other or having coffee together and talking about it as a humorous event and not a sexual event. The guys, on the other hand, will be telling their friends, wow, man, I had a hot, hot, hot gal, and she really, really turned me on with her lap dance. She had some great hooters, too, and boy, did they ever turn me on. Oh, well, that's just the way people are. You gotta live with it, and you gotta learn about it. If you don't know that, uh, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. Well, that's pretty much what the psychologists say and my comments on what the psychologists say. Enough said about that. But now we're gonna get into the depth of this video, and that is what is the real reason that relationships don't last long, that 2.9 years is the average instead of 20 years. It's a simple thing, and it can be solved, but it typically never is. It's a true thing, and if you don't believe it, think back. Think back of how many times this has been a problem in a relationship and how it never goes away. So that's up next. Have you ever noticed that there's some things that you do that always remind you of something else? I'm going to the bathroom is one of mine. As most of my subscribers and a lot of my viewers know, I've lived in Southeast Asia for nearly 16 years. I've been reminded of this uh, particular incident uh, very often, but in the 16 years I've lived in Asia, I haven't experienced it. So it's way behind me, but I always think of it. I ask my subscribers about this uh, particular uh, thing that concerns me uh, about relationships and I got a couple of them that uh, gave me some pretty good answers. But the fact is that this one thing is probably the main cause of people breaking up or relationships going sour that exists in the entire United States of America. The real issue is simple. It's the toilet lid. The toilet lid causes conflicts that run deep. They um, irritate both parties, and there just doesn't seem to be a solution. For some reason, women think that they have the constitutional right to tell you where to put the toilet lid, whether they want it up, whether they want it down, and when they want it that way. But I've looked carefully and I don't see it in the Constitution anywhere. The real cause of this conflict is um, 
kind of unknown. No one understands why it exists. And it only seems to exist in the United States. That's weird too. It never bothered me anywhere else I've lived and I've lived in a lot of different places. I haven't heard a single word about this particular issue since I've been in Southeast Asia. But in the US, in every heterosexual relationship that there is, this is a big issue and it just doesn't seem to go away. I really can't comment on LBGTQ plus relationships. I don't have any friends that are in that group in the USA. Um, yeah, I just don't know anything about it. 16 years ago, it wasn't even an issue and now it's everywhere. But if you have comments on it and it applies to this particular problem, well, let me know in the comments below. I will tell you this, the first time that the toilet lid issue comes up in your relationship, it's the beginning of the end. Earlier we talked about the length of a relationship being approximately an average of 2.9 years in the US. Well, once this issue comes up, that number goes down. That may be the factor that drives the number down, I don't know. Maybe the time together with your significant other is dramatically shortened by this one issue. But it seems to always come up after you've used the toilet and have failed to put the toilet lid in that proper position. Men, on the other hand, think this is a non-issue. They never tell women where to put the toilet seat. Well, they probably want to tell them where to put the toilet seat sometimes, but they usually just take the approach. If the toilet lids up and they need it down, they put it down. And if the toilet lids down and they need it up, well, they put it up. But for some reason, it's never in the desired position that your significant other wants. That's just the way it is. In the 16 years that I've been in Southeast Asia, I've never once experienced um, any conflict or any uh, discussion of what position the toilet lid's in. For some reason, we're immune to that over here. I guess it's just the uh, Asian culture, but no one's ever said a word about it and uh, never suggested anything about it and definitely never bitched about it. So I don't know why it's such a big deal in the USA. I have a friend from Canada, he said it's creeped up there too. That's a weird thing. I didn't know it, it maybe it's gonna spread, you know, like a locust or something, but it, um, it definitely spreads to Canada. I know he's had experience up there because he's lived in Canada in his adult life. I think he's speaking from a position of knowledge. There is a solution to this if you want a long lasting relationship. Get the hell out of the USA and don't mess with American women. Just like the song said, try to find an Asian born woman. Maybe if you live in the USA, an Asian born woman won't be affected by this particular disease, the toilet lid disease. Maybe they'll call that toilet lid dysphoria. I'm not sure what it is, but we'll find out. Every time you leave the bathroom and you think about that toilet lid idea, about it being up when it should be down, down when it should be up. Just remember the song, American Woman, Stay Away From Me. I'm surprised that the lyrics don't have that in it somewhere. But I looked and it doesn't. Maybe that was just his inspiration. Yeah, I wanna thank everybody for watching this rant. I don't know what inspired me to bring it up. It's been so long, 16 years since I've had this problem. But every time I go to the toilet, I think about it. I think it just brings back memories like flashbacks. To me, this really isn't a sexist thing. This is just a peculiarity of conflicts that occurs over this one issue. I don't know what it is. It seems like every woman that I've ever been with, this has been an issue and it's been an issue that destroys relationships. So I'm really glad that I've had 16 years without that. And I urge everyone to uh, take a chance and get out of the USA or uh, find a, an Asian woman that was born in Asia and raised in Asia. Maybe she's just new to the States. And I think that uh, you probably not encounter this situation again. It'll certainly make your relationship last a lot longer if you don't have the toilet lid problem in your relationship.
It's a permanent thing. It never goes away. You can't train people not to do it. It's just there. But now you know what the ultimate cause is for breakups in the USA and why the average relationship only lasts 2.9 years. It's a Home Depot problem where you buy your toilet lids. I don't know, but it's certainly a problem and it doesn't go away. I want to thank everybody for watching. I know this has been a long one. This is JR, the Texpat OTG, saying thanks for watching.